How do crazy people go through the forest? They take a psychopath. <laughs> um, it's been a crazy day for both of us. <laughs> so, I guess vlogging means we uh, let people in on what's going on in our family. The good and the bad. Yep, some of the difficult things. Well, Blake, Blake's a pretty good boy. He listens well and does really good in school and stuff like that. But then today, Blake got himself into some trouble. Um, I got an email. I'll show you. I got an email from his school. Today during lunch, I had found out that Blake had stolen a prize from the prize box. I keep for the children to celebrate good behavior on Fridays. He stole an item for himself and one for a friend who had asked him to steal another. So, this is the first time we've had a had Blake steal anything. And you've got the back and forth between houses. He's at his mom's this week. But it's like, okay. So, you've got to learn that balance of... You know, I guess working with each other in two separate households and two different sets of rules. And it's the same rules for, you know, stealing and stuff like that. I mean, there are just a little bit of differences here and there. Um, so his mom had him FaceTime me. And I guess tomorrow he gets detention at school. He doesn't get to hang out with his friends at lunchtime. But it looks like what we came up to came up with... Um, she had him FaceTime me and we talked. So, Blake, they'd already decided that, um, they're going to do, write a letter of apology to the teacher. And I also, um, suggested that maybe he asked to do some extra chores over at his mom's house so he could get his teacher a little gift because he had stolen from her and he should get, you know, give her something as an apology for stealing and the crazy thing was was Blake was sad because somebody had just stolen from him a few hours earlier so we talked about that like how did you feel when somebody stole things from you you know he said I felt sad I was like well you stole something from your teacher how do you Think that she would feel and he was you know before he called he was already regretting his actions and knew he did wrong but as a parent I think you kind of step through things and walk him through and let him think about it again and he said yeah I, she was probably sad that I stole from her and he's like, okay well what do you think you know your mom and I feel well, you guys probably, you know, aren't very proud when you're still and are sad that I stole something. Oh, good job, buddy. And yeah, so uh, we also talked about being repentant and when he prays tonight and also when he finishes FaceTime and to pray and ask God for forgiveness. Uh, we also talked a little bit about... Uh, what happens as you grow older and those problems aren't corrected and you know maybe stealing a little pack of bubble gum or a little trinket as a kid isn't such a big deal it's still wrong but if those habits start to form what happens as you start to get older and you still and he realizes you still and go to jail and that doesn't sound like a good place so um Blake seemed sorry for his actions he's gonna be doing some extra chores to earn some money to either give his teacher a rose with his letter of apology or some bubble gum or something that he thinks that would be nice for her and he does still have his detention tomorrow at school um, what do you guys think is that sound right as it's a first-time offense and he's very sorry and repentant for his actions so uh, what do you guys think have you guys dealt with anything like that with your kids yet uh, let us know in your comments
want to go into too many de too much detail, but well, my mom has some health concerns, and so they're pretty major. Um, so that's kind of what I've been dealing with today. I didn't really vlog any today. Probably should have. <laughs> um, so just be praying for her. That's all I want to go into about that right now. So. so. So that's there's some major things going on in the family with the the health issues. Uh, we're just gonna ask for your prayers for everybody's support, and um, we're gonna make sure that it's something that the family wants to let other people know. Uh, their vlogging is a connection with us to our friends and family. But at the same time, we don't want to betray the trust of our personal friends and family, too. And we want to make sure that they're okay with us sharing their stories and their issues or things that are going on like that. And, and it's also a little rough to talk about right now, especially all this happening in our, what's this, like our sixth, fourth, fifth day, fifth day of doing a vlog? crazy things are just happening right as we start um getting sick and having this and then blake issue at school uh, so but i guess that's what vlogging is huh yeah <laughs> the good and the bad the good the bad and uh, the movie the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> well uh more to come i think tomorrow we're gonna sit down and discuss our ideas for fitness training and goals and look at what's attainable and stuff like that so see you guys tomorrow good night guys please subscribe and share and <laughs> all that good stuff that we don't remember to say <laughs> <laughs> thank you have a good day these two men are adam and eve's children see how big and strong they are once they were little children but now they have grown up do you see the one with the lamb his name is abel it seems God had told them both to bring lambs to God, but only Abel is bringing a lamb. Thank you. Can you see what his brother is bringing? Is he bringing a lamb? Is he obeying God? No, he is not. He is bringing some things from the garden instead of bringing a lamb. This bad brother's name is Cain. Cain got angry with Abel because Abel did what God said and brought God a lamb. And then, do you know what Cain did? He hit his brother Abel and hurt him so much that Abel died. God will punish Cain for killing Abel. Cain killed his brother Abel because he was angry at God. What a terrible thing to do. Gabriel, are you ready for the questions? You ready for the questions? Question one. Which of these two men is Abel? Can you see? Question two, which one is Cain? What did God probably say to bring? Point to the one who is obeying God. Based on Genesis 4, 8 through 13. Treasure Island, chapter five. The last of the blind man. My curiosity was greater than my fear, and I crept even closer to the end, so that I could see and hear what was happening. There were seven or eight men pounding at the heavy oak door. Even through the mist, I could see the blind man. I heard his voice as he shouted to break down the door. The men obeyed him, and in a flash, the door was ripped from its hinges. Once they were inside, I heard one of the men shout in surprise that Bill was dead. Search him and find the chest, cried the blind man. A few seconds later, the window of the captain's room was thrown open, and a man leaned out and shouted that someone had already gotten to the chest. The money is still here, shouted one of the men. Curse the money, shouted the blind man. Is Flint's packet still there? Obviously, the blind man was not interested in the money in Bill's trunk. He wanted the packet of papers that I now held close to my beating heart. After the men shouted down that the papers were nowhere to be seen, the blind man ordered them to find my mother and me. He knew that we must have taken what he wanted. But the men had had enough. 
They were satisfied with the gold coins and were unwilling to obey the harsh orders of the blind man. Soon a quarrel broke out. The men all threatened each other and then the blind man. This quarrel saved us. While it was still raging, another sound came from the top of the hill, the sound of approaching horses. The next sound I heard was a pistol shot, which was a warning of danger. As soon as they heard the shot, the men scattered in all directions. Only the blind man remained, remained tapping up and down the road in a frenzy and calling for his mates. He took a wrong turn and began walking straight towards the approaching horse. He immediately realized his error and turned with a scream. He ran straight for a ditch, fell, and then got up again, but it was too late, for one horse was already upon him. He went down with a cry that rang high into the night. The four hooves trampled him to death. I leaped to my feet and hailed the riders. They were men who had heard of our trouble and had decided to come help us. They quickly revived my mother, but the blind man was stone dead. We all went back to the inn, which had been ransacked and almost destroyed by the men who had searched it. I knew at once that the paper of packets which I held must be very valuable. I asked the men if they would ride with me to Dr. Livesley House right away. They seemed to understand my urgency, and we set out at once. It's our baby baby ticklish. <laughs> Are you ticklish? Are you feet ticklish? Are you ticklish? Are you ticklish? <laughs> oh, do you need a break? <laughs> it's a Gabriel ticklish. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> Ah!